In this tutorial, we are going to talk about simulating the mechanism of a scissor lift and how we can incorporate it in VR. The mechanism in this design is driven by a piston that pushes the lift upwards and downwards. Go to the simulation workbench. The first step in creating a simulation is defining solids. Solids are active objects within the simulation, and since we only have the lift in the scene, all the components should be defined as solids. You can either select components manually and convert them one by one, or you can use the auto detection tool to convert them to solids based on their hierarchy on the object tree. Click on auto detect solids. Notice that hovering over components in the scene highlights them in red, indicating that they have been converted to solids and are ready to be a part of the simulation. The next step is to link solids to each other using links. Let's first select the base and lock it, since we do not want it to be moving around during the simulation. Then we will add a revolute joint to connect the base with the pin. Click on revolute joint, then click on the base to set it as solid 1, then on the pin to set it as solid 2. Now we need to select the joint location. Those are the three steps that we will be using to create most links in simulation. Create another revolute joint and attach the arm with the same pin. Now click on the edge loop of the pin to set the joint location. The pin from the other side is attached to a rod, but it rotates along with it, so we will add a fixed joint. Fixed joints unify the movements of solid during the simulation, which is what we need in this case. Add another revolute joint and connect the second arm with the sliding pin. Following the same steps, connect the arm with the conjoint pin. And again, connect the other arm with the same conjoint pin. Connect all the pins to the arms using revolute joints with the same steps we have taken earlier. Next, we're going to connect this pen to the upper platform. Add another revolute joint to connect the arm to the sliding pin. I will now mirror all the joints we added to the first side onto the other side. Once we are done with the arms, we can proceed to the piston mechanism. First, let us attach the horizontal rod to the piston cylinder using a fixed joint, since they will be moving together. Next is attaching the piston to the rod on the other side, once again using the fixed joint. To attach the piston to the cylinder, create a prismatic joint. Select the cylinder to set it as solid 1 and the piston to set it as solid 2. Now click on the edge loop of the piston to set the location and direction of the joint. Next we need to confine the movement of the sliding pin within the slit in the base. In some cases a joint would do the job, but in this case enabling collision would work better. Select the base and from the attributes panel to the left click on enable collision. 
Now select the sliding pin and from the panel to the left, enable its collision. Make sure you enable collision for all the sliding pins as well as the base and the top platform where the slits are manufactured. The last step would be to add a force to push the piston and drive the mechanism. Click on the prismatic joint on the piston and from the panel to the left, click on Enable Motor. Open the Functions menu and set a constant of 0.2. Motors enable joints to exert forces and move attached solids through different types of motion functions. Let's take a look at the simulation parameters before running the simulation. From the Simulation menu, select Parameters. The first thing to consider is whether to enable or disable gravity during the simulation. Some designs rely on gravity for a successful simulation. However, this design does not particularly need gravity to work properly. But let's leave it on for now. Time step defines the interval at which simulation is calculated. A lower time step takes longer to simulate but produces more accurate results. The end time determines how long the simulation in real time seconds should take. Let us run the simulation and see if we are missing any joints or connections in the design. From the simulation menu, click on Start. As you can see, the piston is moving, but we have forgotten to connect the rod to the sliding pins. Create a fixed joint and connect the rod to the left sliding pin. And another fixed joint to connect the rod with the pin on the other side. Test out the simulation once more. All the components seem to be connected, but the movement is very coarse. To fix this, Go to the parameters window and lower the time step. Start the simulation again to see the results. SimLab Composer allows us to plot the simulation numerically and through graphs. Click on the plots icon. Now click on the Add button and select a joint or a solid to add it. Now select which attributes to plot and click OK. Let's decrease the simulation end time to have a better look at the graph. Notice that a value is added at each time step during the simulation and you can get the exact value at each time step by hovering with the mouse over it in the graph. Once you're satisfied with the simulation, switch to the VR or the animation workbench. A message will ask us whether we want to convert the simulation we just ran into animation. Click Yes. Next, we need to set how many frames of animation to have for each second of the simulation. Since we ran the simulation in a very short span of time, I'm gonna set the FPS to a high value to be slower in the animation timeline. Click on the lift's assembly and you will find the animation as a single block in the timeline. The next thing we're going to do is to store the animation as an animation sequence that we can use in a 3D PDF or in VR. Select the animation group and click on Create Animation Sequence. Type in a name for the sequence and toggle the Create Reverse option. Now we can either attach those sequences to the object using the Training Builder or we can use actions which are compatible with both VR and 3D PDF. To create an action, select the geometry in the assembly and from the Objects tab to the right, Set the object action to multi actions. With the settings set to loop, open the actions list and click on Add. 
Set the type to animation sequence and click on the lift up sequence to attach it. Add another animation sequence action and select the reversed version of the animation sequence. Now that everything is set, you can save the simulated model as a SIM file and import it into another 3D scene. From the file menu, select Save. Type in a name for the model and click Save. Open the 3D scene where you want to import the lift and from the file menu, select Import. Position the model as you see fit in the scene. Notice that importing a SIM file maintains all actions intact and the model is ready to be used. Make sure that you have a starting position for VR and position it in the location you want, then start the VR experience.